So this video is going to be how to rewire an electric garage heater to use an external 24 volt uh, thermostat instead of the built-in dial. So these electric uh, garage heaters are sold fairly inexpensively at many places like Northern Tool and Menards and other places. I think there's a couple different brands of them, but they're probably all the same uh, from the same place in China. But um, it's not so easy to get one with an external thermostat. It costs a lot more and it's also not as reliable. And some of them have remotes and electronic control and it just seems like it's, it's gonna be prone to failure. So I figured I would just modify uh, the base model version to do what I want. So this, is, this video is gonna be about that. So the one I have is, it's upside down right now because I'm working on it. This is the 7,500 watt model. So they sell these in a couple different wattages. That's the bigger one. So here is the, the standard wiring diagram. So uh, they do have, so this would be where your power is coming in. And then here's your temperature control thermostat, your contact, your fan motor. And then these are all the heating elements. Uh, so it looks like they have five and then there's a switch you can uh, up the wattage all the way up to 7500 if you want or if you don't have you know 40 amp service then you can do 6250 watts by just turning one of them off but they do have a provision for an external thermostat however this would be a high voltage thermostat so this uh, is all 240 volts so this thermostat would have to be a 240 volt thermostat and those are more expensive and then the other big disadvantage is you have to run Romex to it instead of uh, you know neat little thermostat wire so that's why I'm doing this because it, it makes it simpler uh, to use so you know thermostat wire you just need a standard two wire thermostat wire 18 gauge real simple to run and you may already have something like that you may have an old thermostat laying around you want to use uh, so let me go through how I did that. So first you'll need a thermostat, like I said. Now, I just bought one. Now this one's special because it's a low temperature garage. And if you notice, it goes down to 35 degrees. I don't plan to keep my garage full temperature. I just want to keep it above freezing. So I would want to have it set somewhere about 40 degrees or something like that. So this one's real simple, heat on off and here it is out of the box with the cover off so it's all mechanical style uh, Honeywell thermostats, just red and white wire connections there, all right? So you'll need some kind of thermostat that does heat, which is almost any of them, all right? So in here, here's the wiring. Just kind of go over what's happening here. So this, these are the line and terminals so this would be where your 240 volts hooks up and then it goes a couple different places from there now i've added a few things and i'll talk about those in a minute but the way this came is just with another terminal block right right here basically and that's this terminal block here so if you were going to use the 240 volt thermostat then you would want to hook it up like that all right so what's happening here? We have line in, and here's the big contactor that actually turns on the power to the heating elements. So the power goes in here, and then these two connections go out to the heating elements. One goes through there, the other one goes out there. So the big wires are the heating elements, all right? Then there's this uh, thermostat knob, which is that. And that has two connections, it has one and, and I have it pulled off because I'm not using it anymore, but it has a connection for the fan, which I think is this side, and then a connection for the uh, contactor to turn the heating elements on and off. And the way this dial works is it's kind of screwy. Um, well, first of all, this is going to be mounted eight feet off the floor, so if I wanted to turn this on and off, I'd have to get up on something to turn the dial. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to control it uh, from ground level. So that's another reason I'm doing this. But anyway, the way this works is if you turn it a little bit, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little piece that rises there and that turns the fan on. 
So whenever this dial is up off of zero, the fan will be running continuously, all right? And then if you turn it further, then it clicks, and that's the contactor gonna be turning on and off. So with this, you know, the fan's gonna be running all the time uh, unless you get up there and turn it off. This switch here, that's the extra heating element turning. That's this one here that gets turned on. All right, so let me go through how I modified this. Let me turn the light on. Okay, so to do this modification, the first thing you're gonna need is some kind of 24 volt transformer. Uh, since, you know, you have 240 coming in and you have to have 24 volts going down to the, the thermostat. So I just bought a, a small one. This is a 20 volt amp. Um, this one does three different voltages. You can see it does uh, 120, 208, and 240 based on the color. 120, you'd use black and white, 208, red and white, 240, you use orange and white. So that's what I'm doing here. I just added some terminal connections and then plugged it in there to the terminal block for the 240. So that's the 240 going in, and then the 24 volt out is on these red and green, and I'll talk about the connections there at old voltage for a minute. So you'll need a, a 24 volt, or 240 to 24 volt transformer. And I just bought this one online, so there's one if you want to buy it. You only need a small one that fits in there nicely. All right, so I have that mounted up. Next thing you need is some kind of relay to turn on the contactor. Now this is a 240 volt contactor, so the coil here needs 240 volts. All right, so I can't switch the coil with this directly. I have to have a relay to switch on and off the 240. So that's what I've done here is this is just a little tiny fan relay. It's just switching a contactor and that's a Zettler brand one. And that's another thing I just found online. Let's see. I have another one here. You can see the part number there, 4223114-06, or no, sorry, it's the one below it, AZ2280-1CT dash 24 AF. I think the 24 means it's 24 volt uh, switching, all right? And it's 25 amps or something, so that's plenty for just a contactor. So, um, you know, you can buy one of those. I think that was only a couple bucks or something. All right, so here's your 24 volts in, and I'll talk about that. And then the wiring is a little bit complicated. I'll go through this in a second, but this is basically hooked up to that, all right? Then the other thing I did is for the fan, I added a uh, basically a fan timer, which is going to be a delay on make and a delay on break. So what this is going to do is when the thermostat switches on, the first thing that will happen is the contactor, this relay will close and the, the heat coils will come on. They'll warm up and then uh, I have this set for like 10 seconds or something, then it will turn the fan on after the coils are warmed up. That way you don't get a cold blast of hot air and it works just like your furnace does, all right? Then it also does delay on break. So when it shuts off, when the thermostat clicks off and is satisfied, then it will run the fan for some period, which I can set here, you know, up to 390 seconds uh, to basically get all the heat out of the the coils there and circulate the air. So I just think that would be a lot nicer way of doing it than to have it running continuously. Or if you wanted to do this simple, you could have both the fan and the contactor tied together so they would switch on at the same time. The problem is, you know, when you turn it off, the coil is gonna be warm and I don't know, it would take some time for that heat to dissipate. So I think it'd be a little more efficient to have the fan run after. So anyway, this is uh, this is a special control, and it has a built-in relay in it. So then this is controlling the fan. These wires here go to the fan on the back side there. All right, so the part number for that, let's see. this is what it looks like. It's a ICM Controls brand post-purge fan delay, and it's an ICM 251B part number. So again, it has the built-in switching relay. 
otherwise you would have to uh, get us get a separate one so that saves space because you can see space is kind of tight here all right so how are we wiring this up all right uh, there that thing down there is a limit switch uh, that will open when it gets too hot I strongly recommend you leave that alone so that's what I did so that has a wire that's hooked up to right here to L2 all right so we have 240 going from L2 to the the, the heat sensor overload and then that wire goes from there over to here to the contactor coil all right and then it has a piggyback terminal and this wire here goes to the fan all right so i'll show that in a second but let's finish the contactor coil so then it would come out here and then from here i have the jumper wire to the relay and then that's on the normally open coil since you want yeah use the normally open on these and then the one right next to it is the return that goes back up here to L1. All right, so that's the loop for the contactor. The fan starts out the same up to this point. All right, and it's just piggybacked here off of this. So this is L2 coming in. Then that goes over here to the fan relay. All right. Or, no, I'm sorry. It goes from there. It goes directly to the fan first. Then it comes back here to the fan relay and then normally open contact again goes piggybacked back to the return line basically uh, to L1 all right so that's the high voltage wire now I got these wires uh, from pulling off all of these and one important safety note here is this is what they look like so they're just you know quarter inch push on connectors um, do be careful though that these things are tight when you reuse them so they will you might have to use pliers to pull them off because they're tight on there but after you do that you need to take a pair of pliers and crimp those so that they're tight when you push push on so you don't have any loose connections so again for safety always make sure all of them are tight after you push them on make sure you wiggle them and they are tight if they are not tight, then take them off, squeeze them closed a little bit with pliers, and then push them back on so they're all pushed on nice and tight so you don't have any electrical fires, all right? All right, so let's do low voltage wiring next. All right, so uh, we kind of talked about the transformer. So this control here has an input for uh, the red, from the transformer and then the one right next to it is a limit and here's the wiring diagram for that uh, this is available online as well again it's the ICM 251 uh, so it has you know red common and then green would be the fan and I'm using white in this case um, for that so that's the only real change there it does have this limit switch there that has to be closed uh, and that should be connected to red um, so make sure that you, I just ran another wire here to, this is going to be my red bundle. Um, and the, these are loose. I know this is just for temporary holding them together until I put it up on the wall, but all right. So you have two there and then, uh, going to the transformer and then you would also have your red thermostat wire connected to that one. All right. So then your 24 volts goes down to your thermostat through your wire. All right, so then when the thermostat clicks on, then you're going to have 24 volt returning on the white wire, and that will get tied into these. So again, you, should, you would wire this up so that you have your white thermostat wire going in there. Okay. From there, it will go two places. Number one will be the relay that controls the contactor that will turn on the heating elements. Uh, so this will be no delay directly tied to the thermostat. So that will this will click on and off directly with the thermostat, okay? The other place it goes is to the timer, which will initiate the delay on make based on what you set it. 
And again, I wouldn't recommend doing more than 10 seconds because if obviously if the fan doesn't run, then it's gonna overheat. So uh, I'll test that here. I might set it down to one second. We'll see uh, if it gets too hot or not. But um, then after that is activated, it will open this relay and turn on the fan, all right? When the thermostat clicks off, it will stop power on the white. This will pick that up and then it will initiate the delay on brake timer. So the contactor will turn off immediately. Then this will start counting down for whatever period. So like if you set it to two minutes or something, after two minutes, then, then it will shut off the fan, all right? And then the last wires are the common. So that's gonna be the black. So that's this one and common from the relay here. And then that goes to the, I guess we're gonna use green on the transform, all right? So it's really not too complicated. Uh, uh, it's just basic thermostat wiring type stuff. Just be careful, uh, resist the temptation, do not connect common to white on your thermostat because then you've created a direct short, okay? Oh, and that's another thing. I will need to add a fuse here. I will be adding a three amp fuse uh, on this, this red wire here uh, so that my low voltage circuit is fused in case that there is a short like that in something. All right, so again, that's another important one that I was gonna add, so uh, remember to do that. So then this will go up on the wall. You just hook up your two wires here. This one requires eight gauge, so I get some eight two Romex. Um, so, you know, do this according to your local codes. Um, you might have to use conduit and all that and the TH and then wire and all that. So, um, so yeah, that is how you modify it for thermostat operation. Now, if you wanna skip this and just put, or just have them both tied off of this relay, Again, that would be the simpler way to do it, but I like having the, the time delay for the fan. Okay, so that will be how it's wired, and then we just need to install it now. All right, and here is the completed installed garage heater with the high voltage and low voltage wired and completed. I, uh, low voltage is on this side, with the fan delay timer, and you can see the brown thermostat wire coming in there. There's uh, three wire nuts here for the three low voltage wires. You have a red, you have a white, and you have a common, okay? Uh, the transformer is wired into the common and then also the red, but there is a fuse in it first. Make sure you put a fuse uh, on the red somewhere and that's a two amp fuse for this application. Uh, and yeah, just join all the wires together and just keep your reds, whites, and commons separate according to the directions on the um, fan timer and the thermostat and all that. And there she be, so it works pretty great. It's nice to have uh, thermostat control for the heat. All right, so this is gonna be the heater operating. So let's turn up the thermostat. So you have a big clunk from the contactor. So the elements are warming up now. And there goes the fan after a short delay. Right. We'll get some nice warm air coming out of there. And then once the thermostat satisfies, I'll turn it back down. Hear the clunk of the contactor opening. And then uh, the fan delay will count down until the coil is cool. And again, you can adjust those settings to whatever you want by turning those red dials on the fan delay timer. Um, this one, I think, is going to run a minute or two. So I may just end the video here, but you get the idea of the fan 
will just shut off in and then in two. And then the process repeats once the thermostat calls again. So a uh, couple notes so that orange light will stay on the whole, the whole time the thing is powered. And that's just telling you that there's you know, 240 going into it. If the red light comes on, that means the thermal overload has tripped and that should kill everything in there. Uh, and the whole thing should shut down immediately. So if that red light's on, it means you need to check your wiring or you know, block airflow or something like that. The knob on the front of it doesn't do anything because that's unhooked. And then the switch over there on the right side is for selecting the extra element there to go from 60 to 50 to 7,500 watts. So that still works as well. You were limited on your circuit. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed that. And I like this, it works pretty well. Having the thermostat separate is nice because the controls the temperature a lot better in my opinion. So thanks for watching.